There's no, no speed. speed control. Let's either full speed or lopsided. North America uh, and in New England, and um, he said, "I'm seeing a dozen patients like you every week now. Yep. They're coming in all the time." Um, I said, "Any connection to Lyme disease?" And he goes, "I have no idea. I don't know. Never looked at that. But we have some experimental drugs we'd like to put you on. Oh. Psychotropic in nature." And I said, "No thanks. Mm -hmm. Good no idea. thanks." And I went home and I said. Forget it. I am, I'm done with going to medicine. They have no clue. They don't know the human being. Um, that might be Vasa. Uh, and, and I'm sorry I'm taking up so much of your time, but we can spill over. Um, so we'll still do that hour. Um, so some woman lent me her electromagnetic radiation meter. And I took it into my office where I spend 12 hours a day oh, easily. Oh, oh. <laughs> and the meter, it was set for safe levels for human beings. I go in, I turn it on, and bam, hey. the meter goes over. Yeah. Way over the scale. Oh my goodness, what have I been doing to myself? And so, uh, I'm, I, you can move it. Hey, um, and you can get closer and closer, and, and the, there's a sound as well as the meter, and the sound is just getting awful or an awful sounding. Mm -hmm. When I got near the wireless router in my office, so I took it out. You don't put that in. And I put it behind a bookcase in a room that people are rarely in. Mm -hmm. Good idea. And I still had enough signal, but the signal intensity decreases with the square of the distance. So Take come a back in. You touch a cord. You don't use the wireless. If you can. <laughs> so I came back in, and we were, I wanted to go over all sorts of things that you can do. So I came back in. Boom! Made no change. I said, well, oh, so it's not the router. What could it be? And I go around, and the same thing happened as I got nearer to my cordless phone base. Mm -hmm. Luckily, I didn't have a printer at that time. My printer was connected via Ethernet to my laptop's docking station. So I took, I actually bought a new base, but I put it somewhere else. The new cordless phone bases send signals to the remotes only when a call comes in. They used to, the type I had, they were constantly in communication. Mm -hmm. So it could say, oh, you lost your base. It's like a smart meter. <laughs> so they call that eco, ECO technology that's in those. If you don't have one of those and you have cordless phones, get rid of the one you've got and buy one of these new ones for your own health. But my headaches went away, and they've never come back. I can feel them, but there's no intensity. I can feel that it's still there. Do you know what I mean? Sort of, you know, they're not present. They never get bad, but especially if I'm in a room with lots of neon lights. Oh, you can forget that. Fluorescent lights. I mean. Um, mm -hmm. Because it goes like this all the time. Right. So, good question. When you get a call, so the worst time is when you get a call. When you're on the phone calling or getting a call. Never hold these up to your ear while you're talking. So get the plug that plugs in and use the earbuds or put it on speakerphone. Set it down Four away feet. from you and talk from Four the Four feet at distance. least. Pardon? Yeah. Four feet. At well, least four three feet is okay. If you can. Actually, three is all right. Well, <laughs> but four is we won't really argue. very safe. We won't argue. <laughs> Microwaves, all sorts of these sorts of things we can get into, but I'm not going to right now. But um, the other thing I want to suggest to people that, and most of you are probably already spending more than four hours a day, every, make sure every hour you get up 
every 10 minutes or so, it's great to have a window nearby, look away so you're not looking at the same distance the whole time. When you're looking at the screen, you're focused on one distance, so however far away your chair is, that's what you're doing. You need your eyes to be able to see off to the infinite. Every 15 minutes, at least, do that. And also move, walk, run, whatever, get the heart rate up, but at least get outdoors, rain, shine, whatever, every single day. And here's where rhythms can come in. Try to set a rhythm. Do it according to rhythm. And it will have amazing effects. So those of you that are meditating, I hope you're doing your meditations at a given time. And you invite spiritual beings, you invite the elemental beings to participate in your meditation. But don't become sloppy, because they'll get angry. If you make this commitment to meditate, do so at the same time. If you're going to be late because you're off in Toronto giving lectures and you're not going to be able to do your meditation at your time, let them know that. Oh, I'm sorry, I'm not going to be there today at this time. They can make other arrangements. So let's go and do some movement. We don't have so, out. And out together. Thank you. 
Good ready, and then we'll go out to the right. If you can sit, if you can move, if you can make yourself a little mind game of singing your melody and then moving it, it's the most fun part of it. Mm -hmm. It's so joyous, it's so great. And that's when you enter if you're thinking about, oh, there will be time, there's not physical laws, and there's movement, and it comes from the soul, and it will be visible. That's what you enter. Your soul sings it. You make it visible. You're right on the path. You're right on the path for that. And now it's lunchtime. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. You've got a voice, you've got it to right there. And of course, we, we can actually, you're talking about the sex. I can tell you from experience that doing everything together with other people is much better. <laughs> <laughs> much better. <laughs> to just feel into each other, to move in the right place, to be harmonious with everybody. It's just really <laughs> that's where love can come. Mm -hmm. And that's what we need to counteract all of that. Mm -hmm. still like that. Yeah. That's brilliant, though. I like that because if there's all these things that you can feel yeah. in a room of other people, yeah. um, that you, know, you can kind of feel them in sexuality, but when you're moving together, there's this kind of, oh, they're kind of asleep, they're sort of not in their body, or they're really there and present, and somebody's, their musicality is pouring out in the room. I mean, it's, it's, you're right, it's amazing. Give thanks to Mother Earth, give thanks to the Father Son, give thanks unto the rain and the garden where they both are one. Okay, go. Okay, so this is Sarah Walton, and I'm Julie Simmons, and this person who's not here is Aaron Fogel. And we are Silver River. And um, it's our fault that Andrew is here. And um, uh, Aaron is, is a, it's not a child of anthropo anthroposophy, but a uh, youth. Youth, anthroposophical youth. Mm -hmm. And um, she's in California and got stranded there, so she couldn't be here. But um, on account of her connection to the anthroposophical youth, she, um, <coughs> it was her idea to bring in Andrew. But Silver River, is um, not necessarily anthroposophical. Um, we are, it, we came together to create a, uh, I guess what you call a metaphysical school um, where we hope that lots of people will come to get educated in lots of different ways that are not on the beaten track. And uh, we call it Silver River because the Silver River is the Milky Way. And um, the Milky Way is the above and the earth is the below and it just seemed like the right way to call it. Mm -hmm. So Sarah can tell you a little bit about what how Silver River is uh, forming. Yeah, so we started with the idea of having a school that includes the celestial and the terrestrial and everything in between. And Julie already has a, curric a beautiful curriculum in astrology, so we thought that would be a good place to start. So um, that's and then, the main lesson. That's the main the main <laughs> curriculum at this point, but also wanted to have wonderful people like Andrew and people that have a knowledge of the esoteric to come and speak. Um, I myself am a shiatsu therapist, yoga teacher, and uh, qigong teacher, so reflexologist, thank you. So, <laughs> and so we wanted to have the healing arts as part of it and also farming. So we, we want to cover all the different realms. And so we're starting with what we have and we're building on it and eventually we'd like to have a curriculum for 